Hello and uh, welcome to a new video. In this screencast we are going to take a look at the C programming language in a, from a very basic point of view. So if you don't know anything about CDEF, this is a great video to start with. Okay, so we are going to take a look at, this, at the Fibonacci function, how to implement the FizzBuzz uh, thing, and uh, we are going to take a look at some how to declare a class and some methods, and there is, then we have a little bit more advanced uh, uh, subject. We are, talk, we are going to talk about uh, subsets. So let's begin with the Fibonacci function. So, uh, if you want to write it recursively, we can you can define a function. So functions are are uh, usually defined by the func keyword, which uh, then uh, we give a name to the function, uh, which can take one or uh, zero or more parameters. Uh, and now you check the parameters. So the Fibonacci series is defined when the value is zero, we just return zero. So if uh, n is equal to zero, we just return that. Uh, it just returns zero. If n is equal to one, we return one, right? And then we say uh, Fibonacci n minus one plus uh, Fibonacci n minus two. And here we can we can uh, call the function um, with a value. So if you say Fibonacci uh, of twelve, uh, this gives this gives back uh, one forty four. However, this function it's uh, it's very recursive, and uh, if you say Fibonacci of 18, for example, it might take a little while. Uh, so, um, uh, if you increase the value a little bit further, I'm afraid it will fail to work in a reasonable amount of time. So, 25. This is exponentially exponentially slower. Um, but there is a way to to cache it. So if you say uh, here it's cached, uh, CDEF will do something that uh, will automatically cache the function. So if you call the function with the same value again, uh, it will remember what value was returned before and will return that and will not call the function again. So this uh, this uh, improves the in improves the performance. If you say Fibonacci of 100 uh, in any programming language, this will take forever, right? Uh, but because uh, we catch the function, the, the result is uh, uh, instant. Um, the Fibonacci function can also, uh, uh, you can calculate the Fibonacci in a more efficient way. So um, if you, if we define the function, uh, let's, let's define the function uh, iteratively. So this is defined recursively. If you say uh, we have two values, so right, you have a, uh, have uh, our uh, let's call it uh, a which is a zero then you have a variable b which is a one and then you say n times so repeat n times and you say uh, a and b and uh, is equal with um, uh, b and this is equal with a plus b right so the the second value becomes the first the first value takes the value of the second one and the second one uh, is the a plus b is the uh, sum of all uh, of the both variables, uh, and here we can just return b, uh, and this should do it. Uh, maybe that's a little bit off. Uh, maybe a is the correct result here. Yeah, uh, so you have the same results as before. Um, so this is how to uh, uh, declare the Fibonacci. Uh, also, you can use here an array, but it's not, it's not that efficient. Okay, so um, let's move to the second topic, which is the FizzBuzz. So, what is the what are the rules of, the, of FizzBuzz? Uh, it simply is uh, we have uh, we have some numbers. So let's say we have one uh, numbers from uh, one to one hundred, and let's call it this range. So we have the range from one to one hundred, and uh, if the number is divisible by three, we print Fizz. If the number is divisible by five, we print uh, buzz. If it, and is if the number is divisible by both three and five, we print uh, fizz buzz. Otherwise, we print the number. So let's do it. So you have for for my n in the in this range, right? Uh, I say if um, n uh, is divisible by uh, by three. So if the modulus of 3 is 0, that means that uh, n is divisible by 3. Um, 
then we say uh, if uh, add, uh, 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 this can be done a little bit more efficiently. So if uh, n divisible by 15, we print uh, because we need to check this first, right? So uh, we say uh, is buzz, right? And if it's divisible, else if it's divisible by 5, we say uh, buzz. And else if is divisible by 3, we say fizz. Uh, otherwise, we say the number. Right? So this is a little bit messy, but uh, bear with me here. So, uh, let's see if it, this is correct. So 3 is divisible by 3, uh, we print fuzz, uh, fizz. Uh, 5 is divisible by 5, it prints buzz. Uh, 15 is divisible by 15 and uh, it prints fizz buzz. So I think it's correct. Uh, 30 it's uh, divisible by 15, 3 fizz buzz and so on. So this is uh, correct. But this can be done uh, in another way by using um, a case, a switch case statement. right? So if you give uh, the number, uh, let's say I give the number uh, n to this. Uh, this uh, block and I say uh, case when uh, when this number um, divisible by uh, 15 is equal to 0 I say uh, is buzz case uh, this number divisible by 5 is equal to 0 I say uh, buzz and case uh, this number is divisible by uh, 3 I say uh, uh, fizz and by default when uh, all the values uh, failed I say uh, that number ok um, ok so I remove the, this code here because we don't want and let's try this one so this works the same Let's take a look at some values. Uh, 15 is buzz. Yeah, this is correct. Um, so this uh, this dot here uh, really really refers to to a variable to the topic variable that is in scope here. So if you say um, here we can store the vari the uh, the variable in another uh, with another name. So the default it's the it's an underscore which is pretty much invisible because you can use the dot. So that simply uh, applies this uh, operator on the topic variable, on the current topic variable. So if you say here uh, x, for example, uh, you can say here x divided uh, divisible by that modulus that. So I think this is the same. Yes. Okay. Um, of course, this can be done a little bit more efficiently. You can check if uh, this is divisible by five, and here you can check. Uh, this is also divisible by three, and do that, and so on. So, okay. so I think this uh, this gives you a taste of uh, how how this can be done. But there is a, a little bit uh, there is another way, right? There is always another way. So if you say uh, let's define a function. So I want to map these values. Uh, I don't want to print them, but to map them. So if I define a function, say uh, a map uh, this bus. Right, kind of a long name for that, but let's do it anyway. Um, so I take uh, a number n here, right? Take a number n, and then this uh, this block uh, here just returns the, that values. So it do not print them, do not print them, but uh, just return them. Um, let's make a code a little bit smaller to fit on in, in the window um, and here we can just say uh, uh, I have that range right so I can really inline that range because I don't uh, uh, there is no purpose to uh, use it in a variable so I can inline it and uh, I can say map by that function which is a uh, map fizzbuzz so I can map uh, each number in that range. I can map it to to this function, and here I can just say. So here is my result, right? So for each result in in that map, 
I can just say the result and I should print the same, uh, should be the same, let's see, yeah. Um, so this is the way, so given uh, given, uh, given case, uh, this statement here uh, returns the, the value which is evaluated here. And map uh, simply goes to that uh, that range and uh, creates an array with each value, uh, each value mapped. So uh, each value in this range is called uh, uh, to is passed to this function, and this function does something and returns another another uh, value, right? So it returns fees, buzz, buzz, fees, or uh, or that number n. Uh, and this for uh, for now for uh, loop for result so uh, each result in uh, in this uh, list so this creates a list if you take a look at this list let's just print the list and don't iterate over it so you can print it like like it is so it prints a list of uh, all the values so one two fees four buzz five uh, fees and so on um, so this is this is uh, this is how to map a, a, a function a uh, list of uh, an array of values okay let's move on uh, to the classes uh, okay so classes are a little bit more eccentric in CDF in the way that uh, um, we'll see in a moment so let's let's take an example we have an, a class example and uh, we can take some uh, some arguments to this class they are not really called arguments, they are really called, uh, I don't know, uh, initial values or something. Okay, so let's, let's say A and B here. And uh, we have a method, um, I, uh, which is foo, and uh, we say here uh, A is equal with that value A, and uh, B is equal with that value B. So if you create an object, let's call it uh, an example of... Uh, one and two right so this is my object one and i create another object which is an object two and it has uh, 41 and 42 let's say okay so if i can I, if i can say uh, object one foo and that really is the, the value so object two foo um it should really it should really show that so these values here go uh, are stored in a and b right so it's it behaves almost like a function in the way which is uh, which stores the values, but really each uh, each object has different values. If you have your object one uh, stores this value and object two stores these values. So if you print if you execute the code, uh, a is one and b is two in the first object and uh, in the second object a is forty one and b is forty two. Okay, I think this is pretty easy to understand, right? Um, uh, methods also can take some arguments so if I say here an argument and I can say here uh, argument is equal with uh, that particular value right so I can put here uh, I can put here foo and I can put here bar right so I have argument is equal with foo in the first case and argument is equal with bar in the second case right um, so this is how to declare uh, a class very in a simple very in a very simple way. Um, uh, there is also a little bit more interesting about these values here, these parameters. Um, if you say here, uh, what is the value in object one of a? So let's say that value in object a. Let's really remove this. Uh, Okay, so object two of was declared, but not used. Let's use it anyway. So let's use it here. So object one, it prints uh, value the value of a in object one is one, uh, and the value of uh, a in object two is 42, 41. And you can we can change these values later. So if I say, uh, you know what, object one uh, a is equal with uh, something foo, something like that. So really changes the value of a uh, using this notation here um, I can change the value of uh, object uh, 2 as well so I can change the value of uh, a to be bar and you should print uh, full bar right correct okay um, 
there is another that is another uh, way another uh, type of variables in a class uh, for example you can have um, a kind of instance variables that are uh, that that cannot be initialized by the by the user so these values uh, can take arguments for from the user right and they can also have uh, default values so you can say 42 here or uh, 99 here and so on so if i create let's let's take an example of of that and i will go to the has variables in a moment so if i let's remove this for a while for a bit and i can say what is the object uh, foo with argument uh, foo. okay so uh, object one i really mean and uh, this <laughs> this is the feature of cdf which uh, really identifies uh, uh, when you misspell a variable so it says that object is not declared in the current scope uh, and it gives the error that object foo which I typed earlier and it says did you mean object one uh, yes I do mean that and uh, here it here uh, it takes the value so if I initialize an example with no um, with no uh, values I, I don't pass any argument it will use these arguments here a is equal to 42 and b is equal to 99 and uh, i can really uh, pass uh, something uh, for example i can only pass the value of a and i can say uh, a is equal to um, with uh, 1 to 3 right and it prints a is equal to 1 to 3 and for b i didn't pass anything and b is still 99 and because a is the first value i can omit the the name of to which value I passed so this is the same however if I want to only pass a value to to B I can say uh, B uh, colon and that value and it says A is equal to 42 the default value and B is equal with uh, 1 to 3 the value that I just uh, passed to the to the class um, okay so let's go now to the to the has value to the has variables uh, I can have um, so this is let's let's call it a, a private. It's not really private, so let's uh, I don't know. It's a good name, uh, and I can say here, uh, you know what? This value is uh, it's a secret. So you know, uh, but they are not really private. They are private in the sense that uh, um, let's call it uh, not. Um, Mm, some uh, some better name. I think I end up at a better name. Um, let's let's continue to use it private. I don't have any good name now. Uh, but here, uh, so let's let's read. Uh, let's modify a little bit the method foo. So I can say here uh, um, my private private. Uh, so private is equal to that, and I can say. Uh, a is equal with uh, that A and B is equal with uh, that B. Um, okay, so I call um, let's really name this object because we have only one object, and uh, I can just say foo. And the prince uh, private is equal with a secret, and uh, A is equal with 42, and B is equal with 1 to 3, as we expect, right? Uh, so what is different by because, uh, about this uh, has variable um, is the fact that uh, this uh, this variable, this class class instance variable, it's not uh, declared by the user. So a user cannot give it a value. So the value is defined only in this class, and uh, only the class can uh, initialize it, right? So if I pass this value secret, uh, it's guaranteed to not be uh, changed by the user at the initialization, right? However, uh, the user can access it. So if I say here, uh, say object private, it will print that is secret, uh, right? Um, so that is secret. The value is secret, and uh, I can I can really change it. So if I say uh, object private is equal with uh, uh, not secret anymore, right? So I, I say I print again the object private, uh, 
it really prints uh, it's not secret anymore so the user can change the value afterwards but not will uh, cannot initialize it uh, and here is an interesting uh, and here is an, inter an interesting feature I can say here uh, you know my private is equal with a plus b what that means so whatever the value of a and whatever the value of b is uh, we will get to that private and we'll create a new variable uh, with that value so in this case because um, a is equal to 42 and b is 1 to 3 the value which I passed here uh, the value of private is uh, 165 one, 165 um, ok so these are, these are uh, uh, a little bit um, uh, too much detail here but let, let's go on a little bit further we have uh, the uh, init uh, the init method which is called when the when the class is created when the, when a, a new object is created All right uh, and I can say here uh, um, uh, object created uh, object created with uh, with an a and uh, and b right so it's uh, it prints here object is created with uh, 42 and uh, 1 to 3 so it print it it uh, assigns the value a and b right and then calls this method um, okay so object created with 4 uh, 4 2 and 1 2 3 and here i can i can simply modify the values if i want so if i say uh, you know what i want a to be twice of that so i can say here uh, when you create the object make a to be twice of that value and also make b twice of that value uh, and if i print that that uh, the, the thing again it prints uh, a is equal to 84 and b is equal to 246 right because i uh, doubled a and I doubled b the value which is provided by the user uh, in the second case and uh, however a thing to notice here uh, private is still the original values of a and b because private it's uh, it's a sign earlier of uh, uh, when this method is called so the, the uh, init method is called after uh, it uh, all the value all the variables all the class uh, inside variables are declared declared so you can use the you can use here uh, uh, in init uh, private uh, private is and I can have this value so it prints in init private is 165 so the value is already uh, uh, assigned uh, okay uh, so this this uh, this shows how to use classes I guess uh, you can also have uh, have inheritance uh, let's go to a very quick example so let's declare a class foo and I can have a, uh, and I can have a method which is uh, uh, foo and I can say uh, inherited right. Um, so really, um, if I say this example uh, inherits from foo, and I uh, remove this method here, right? So let's, let's remove everything that we learned so far, uh, and let's just declare the class as example and a method foo, which is which prints that uh, this is inherited, and uh, let's also remove this and uh, this, okay. So I create a new example, right? So I create a new, a new example object, and I say uh, call this method foo on this object that I created, because foo is not declared here. We'll use the method foo which is uh, de defined in the in the foo class, right? So if I print this, it will print inherited, even if this method foo is not declared here. However, if I uh, declare the method foo here and I uh, and I return uh, not inherited uh, it will call this method instead so if I print it again it will say not inherited right and I can also have some values uh, so I can say uh, uh, let's say your name and here I can say uh, and I can say name is equal with uh, 
with uh, myself name. So whatever, whatever uh, uh, self is, self is myself. And uh, because name is not uh, redeclared in this example class, it will use the name from the foo, uh, from the from the foo class. So if I can say here, um, uh, you know, uh, create an, a new example with this name. So let's name uh, name is cdef, right? And I say object foo, it it will print name is cdef, uh, and we will use the name from here. So the inheritance does. Uh, inheritance of uh, class attributes and class vi variables and this is really exciting right okay so i think this this uh, concludes the 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 lecture on classes i guess so let's 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 go on to subsets uh, what is a subset <laughs> oh boy so this is a little bit more complicated so we have uh, a subset is really a subtype of something Right. So if I declare a, sub a subset, let's call it a, a natural. Um, and also, let's declare a, a first. Let's declare a, a subset of integer. So what we want to do here? We want to we want to uh, declare a subset integer that is only an integer in the sense that uh, we want to pass something to a to a to a function, right, or to a method, and we want to uh, be sure that we get an integer and we don't get a rational number or a floating point number and so on you only we only want to want to get an integer and uh, this can be done in cdef by saying uh, you know what declare a subset integer uh, which inherits from the number class right and it validates the argument by saying uh, you know what this must be this needs to be int so it's integer and uh, i can say in the same in the same way, I can um, I can inherit from a subset. I declare, declare another subset which inherits from another subset, and I can say uh, this natural so natural number. Uh, it's a it's a subset of integers, uh, which uh, the value must be uh, so the this value must be greater or equal to zero, right? Uh, Okay, so natural really means uh, greater or equal to zero. Or maybe if you if you uh, don't like that definition, we can say greater greater than zero, right? And really, um, an easier way is just to say uh, is positive. So natural is positive, right? Okay. So if I declare a function, let's call it uh, uh, foo, and it takes an argument n, which is a subset of uh, of an integer. Right. Let's try this one first, and I say uh, um, say n. Right. So I print that value. So if I call uh, with 42, right. Let's see if it works. A natural has been declared by 90 seconds. Okay. So that that is a warning. Uh, don't 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 mind that warning. Uh, if you use uh, natural here. Uh, it works okay so I have this uh, so um, it really it really says uh, it really validates the, the argument here the parameter the value that it was passed to this function and if the value is not natural uh, in the sense that uh, is not an integer in the sense that it's not a number and it's not an integer and it's not positive it will fail right so it uh, uh, this simple lines of code will do all the check for you and if I say here uh, you know what uh, I can I want to pass uh, minus 42 so 42 is not a natural number right because it's negative and I can say here and it breaks it fails right why because uh, function foo does not match a foo number invoked as minus uh, uh, 42 uh, possible candidates are uh, foo when n is natural Look at that. So it really tells you that uh, who expects a natural number. Uh, I can also, uh, because CDEF supports uh, multiple inheritance, um, and I really, um, I want to show you, I want to show you this. So I, I'll put this into into this topic. Um, uh, 
Uh, not multiple inheritance. Did I say multiple inheritance? No, I, 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 I really meant multiple dispatch. Multiple uh, multi methods, let's call it multi methods or multiple dispatch. Multiple dispatch, right? Um, so I can declare another function foo which takes any value of any uh, of any number of any type right so you, I can say here uh, any value uh, any value of n and here I can say uh, uh, this is natural and I can print that value um, so it goes to any value right and if I say here uh, 42 as a positive one it goes to natural so it calls uh, which uh, which function really uh, matches the argument that I just uh, sent to that function. Um, if I say here uh, 42 uh, plus 5, it's positive, but it's not an integer. Let's see what that, what that does. It says, uh, you know what, that's an any value, right? Because uh, it really does, is not, uh, is not an, a natural number. However, um, let's let's say I want to pass minus 42, but I want to, s to see that this is an, an integer. So it's an integer, but it's not a natural number. So if I say here functional, function foo, n, which is an integer, um, say here uh, integer dot n. And if I execute this, it prints integer minus 42. However, if I say foo 42, it still prints natural because that's that's more appropriate uh, for that. So, and it also checks the, the uh, order in which functions are declared. So if I just uh, uh, swap this around, so if I pass, if I swap this with that, uh, it, uh, it goes to integer because that's closer, right? So it goes to whatever passes the, the check first. Um, okay, um, a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, uh, more on this. Uh, it's really that um, um, uh, the difference between uh, subsets and, and types is the is the fact that uh, a subset is declared with this notation, uh, or while a type is declared with another notation. So a type is declared with. Uh, with this, uh, with this kind of notation, just put the type before the variable. And a subset, it's uh, this uh, um, less than sign, right? Uh, if I can pass, if I pass here uh, 42 plus 5, it goes to any value because not an integer, not a natural number, but it, it's a number, right? And if if I uh, want to print, want to call it with foo, it will fail, and it says that. Um, Foo is not a string. It's not. A, it's a string, but it's there is no function that accepts this uh, this value. So it really it really says that uh, foo. Uh, it's an n of natural. It's an n of integer, or it's a number n, but no nothing for strings. Okay. So if I declare a function with text strings, so if I say foo string of s, I can put here. Uh, and really, yeah, this is a number, not any value anymore. So this is a number, and I can say here string that string. Um, let's make the code a little bit more compact here. Um, and it says, "Opa, it's there is a, there is a, a function that accepts a string, and I call that." Um, but we can we can go this we can go with in this fashion forever. If I call it with a regular expression, it we also have an error because there is no function and so on so uh, what to learn from this is that uh, um, you can declare your own types so uh, let's go a little bit more on types and a little bit more on subsets I think no subsets are pretty much covered here so this is this is anything you should know about subsets so this block here uh, calls the calls uh, this block is called with this particular value. So let's say uh, what value uh, is this block called? So in integer, so I say int, I say this value. So let's say what that value I get. Um, oh, I don't have any. 
so let's say 42 so I go int uh, goes to that value 42 and if I say uh, minus uh, it goes minus 42 because um, it passes the test on uh, on uh, it goes here natural but it fails and go then it goes to integer and it calls it again and you have the value uh, in this block so you can validate or can validate this uh, this value in uh, in many different ways you can pass it to a function to make a little bit rigorous check on it and so on so um, this in this way you can you can validate your uh, your arguments and uh, and be 100% uh, sure and uh, safe that you you get what you want right and um, uh, you can also declare your own types uh, which I'm going to go in a second so let's let's remove anything that it's about subsets so we are done with the subsets so that's everything you should know and if I declare a, uh, let's declare a class which is an example and uh, uh, I really have a value so let's say a value here right and I say um, I don't I don't have any methods right I just just have this uh, this class this example class right and uh, if I want to want a function that takes an example of that of that uh, and let's say this uh, this is any any value right so if I say um, foo minus 42 it goes uh, it's any however if I create an example uh, an object of type example so if I say example of value um, uh, 1 2 3 4 right and I say uh, foo of that object uh, so it, it should go in this function because I declare it with the example type and it says uh, example and you have this jibber jabber right um, this is because uh, this example class does not define a string a stringification method right so what is that the, uh, it's a way to uh, convert implicitly an uh, an object to a string so if I declare the method 2s which means really means to string right if I declare the method 2s and I can say uh, example uh, of that value right so this this is the string that i return when this object is string stringified right and it prints example one two three four right <laughs> and i can really put here any value i want so the value is and i can say that right so any any string that uh, any string can be returned by uh, by this uh, stringification method and uh, so it goes when i call uh, for it minus 42 it goes in this function and, and prints any which is uh, the value and then I say uh, I create a new object example 1 2 3 4 and I can really inline it here right and uh, it goes in the second in the second uh, in the first in the first function because it has the example type here so a class it's an user defined type in the language right and uh, yeah, I think I think this this concludes the video. So, if you have any questions, please leave uh, leave a comment, and uh, I will try to answer them very nicely. So, thank you for watching, and uh, have a nice day.